my friends. Uh, welcome to Prim Uncensored, where I tell you my uncensored opinion about stuff. Uh, but today, I got a special request from my girl Malika. Hi, Malika! Um, to tell one of my stories. And if you know me, or if I'm your friend, or if I've ever taught you, you know that I love telling stories. I'm not a liar, I'm a storyteller, I promise you. Uh, my stories are always pretty good, or at least my delivery is always pretty good. So she specifically asked that I please tell one of her favorites and mine about the one time that I almost got murdered. <laughs> and I'm saying this with a smile. So while I get ready today, I'm going to try and tell you about the one time I almost got murdered. Uh, today I'm wearing a like a baby pink sari. It's got like a silver border on it, and I like it with blue. This always reminds me of Krishna for some reason. I don't know why. So whenever I have like baby pink, I like to match it up with like a harsh blue color, like a heavy blue color. Um, so a lot of my eyeshadow and whatever will be related to that. So to start off, I would tell you that this is this is something that happened back in 2016, um, around Gorpurima time. So it was like earlier in the year, like around March. And uh, before that, I used to think to myself that I was kind of a uh, spiritual atheist, which is kind of, it's, it's like an oxymoron, you know, like, how can you be a spiritual atheist, you know, because I just felt like God was protecting everyone and he was looking over everyone, but God didn't care about me, like he was just like indifferent to my life, you know. It felt like no matter how hard I prayed or how much I wanted something that wasn't bad, he just didn't care. Or if something bad happened, like there was no punishment for the wicked, you know, nothing happened. And it just seemed like everyone was having such a great life and I was just always like in between struggles, you know, it's like one struggle to the next. So I considered myself kind of a spiritual atheist. And I'll tell you when that stopped was this incident in 2016. I was coming home. Uh, my husband was doing some work around the house, so the door was open because he was just running up and down the stairs, carrying things and moving things and cleaning things the way he is, uh, if you know him. And um, I'd come home, it's hot outside, I said, all right, I'm going to take a shower. So I took my clothes off and I put on a gumcha. A gumcha is like, it's an Indian towel, basically, a Bengali towel or an Indian towel. Um, it's just a thin piece of cotton that you wrap around your body. So you can see my gumcha back there, that blue one. So, got undressed, put on this gumshoe to go take a shower, and meanwhile I was uh, putting on one of my favorite TV shows, 30 Rock. So I have like the first three seasons on my computer, and I put on 30 Rock. I love 30 Rock. And I was just messaging someone, and suddenly I heard the door click. And I thought, boy, that's awfully quiet. Like, my husband would come in a room and he's just like, why are you just sitting there? Why haven't you done anything? You didn't take a shower yet? I need your help. You know, he's like really, really just like chatty, you know? And it was just quiet. I thought, boy, my husband's being really quiet. And I turned around, and there was a man in the room. And he had opened the door, and he'd come inside. And I was really confused. And it, a part of me was like, maybe this is some kind of weird joke that I don't understand um, or something. And then suddenly he had pulled out a big, long machete, you know, a cutlass, a machete. And he put it right up next to my neck. And I... I, I, I jump back a little bit. I got a little startled, so I jumped back. This is around four o'clock in the afternoon by early, almost five o'clock actually. So I was waiting for this man to say like, give me your money, give me your computer, give me your cell phone. I would have been like, here, just take everything, just get out of my house. I just wanted him to leave, you know? And um, he was just standing there with this machete. This man was standing there so long, I tell you, I, I feel like he was like an amateur thief. You know, because usually if you're going to thief, you're going to thief in the night, you know, you're not going to thief in the middle of the day with the sun setting and everybody can see you, you know, he was some kind of amateur thief. But anyway, so I was like waiting for him to say something and he never said, I tell you, this man stood there so long with this machete, just threatening me with this machete. And at one point he just told me to be quiet and, um, you know, while I was sitting there waiting for him to do something or say something. I saw many things, you know, I thought about my family waiting for me in America. They would have no idea what was going on. Um, I thought about my niece who at that time was, you know, still not even a year old. 
I thought about the fact that there would be blood all over the floor. I would be dead. I'd wonder if somebody would find me and take me to a hospital and maybe save me. Or if maybe this was just the end of my life. And at that point, I just accepted, like, I'm going to die. Like, I'm already dead. This is it. Like, and it was just like, I wasn't freaking out and I wasn't panicking. I was just like, all right, I'm dead. Well, I mean, what am I going to do? Throw off my gum and start jiggling? Like, there's, there was nothing I could do. I didn't have a weapon. I don't know how to fight anybody. I'm a Brahmin. So I was just like, all right, I'm dead. This is it. This is how Prema Rupa's life ends. I'm going to I'm going to die at the hands of the strange man. Then suddenly he pulls out a gun. Okay. And I'm like, okay, now I'm definitely dead. Cause this man got a machete and a gun, but then he took so long and I don't know why he was just standing there awkwardly. I honestly can't tell you how long he was standing there. Cause it felt like five minutes, but it might've been like just one or two minutes, but you know, thoughts are super fast. So, I mean, I was just sitting there waiting for him to be like, give me your money, give me this, give me that. Didn't say nothing, didn't do nothing, but he's just standing there with a machete and a gun. Now, many people like to ask me, they're like, Primo, is that a real gun? And I'm gonna tell you, I'm like 80% sure it was not a real gun, but I'm gonna tell you right now, um, like I wouldn't test that theory. You know, like, like, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a real gun, and I'll tell you why. Because it had a red trigger on it, like a toy gun. So I was like, this is definitely not a real gun. But I'm not going to test that. I'm not going to be the one that says, hey, let me see if that gun's real or not. Like, that's not my job, you know? So I'm pretty sure it wasn't a real gun, but I also wasn't going to test that. Another reason why I think it's not a real gun is because his machete was in his right hand, and the gun was in his left hand. Now, let me tell you something. You would put your strongest weapon in your strongest hand. Am I right or am I wrong? Right? So if you got a gun, you would definitely hold it in your right hand, right? Most people are right-handed, especially in India. Where most of us are right-handed. You put the gun in your right hand. Why, why would you hold a gun in your left hand, right? It's like if I had a choice between driving, you know, a tank and a bicycle, you know, I wouldn't. I would pick the tank, right? The tank is a stronger is the stronger vehicle over a bicycle any day, right? I'm not gonna just like, I don't know. Anyway, so I was like, this gun is fake, but I'm not gonna test that because you know what? That machete is real. It was shiny. It was sharp. It was real. Apart, I, and I don't know why I also felt guilty. I was like, oh my god, I hope my husband doesn't come down here and get upset. And then I'll, another part of me is still hoping this is also like sick joke that I'm not understanding, like some kind of weird Bengali thing that I don't get. I'm just like hoping that, like maybe there's just some, he, he made some kind of weird friend that likes to like threaten people with machetes. So all of these thoughts are swirling through my mind, but I'm telling you right now, I did not one time think of Krishna and I'm being 100% completely honest with you as a devotee, having been a devotee. I've been an initiated devotee for 10 years, and I'm telling you right now, I didn't think of Krishna even one time. I wasn't like, save me, Krishna. None of that happened. Sorry, sorry, that just didn't cross my mind. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why, honestly. Couldn't tell you why I didn't think of Krishna, but I just didn't. So then my husband comes downstairs, right? He was upstairs, and he comes downstairs, and he peeks his head in. I was like, oh my God, I don't know why I was so upset about him being mad. It's not my fault. But anyways, that's really messed up, isn't it? Yeah. So he peeks his head in and suddenly I, I promise you, my husband turns into Shah Rukh Khan, you know, like I love me some Shah Rukh Khan. He comes in and he goes, hey, and then the guy like turns to him, right? This guy, you know, is covered in this bandana. You can't see anything except for his eyes. You know, he's got the machete. He's got the gun. My husband's like, hey, and the guy turns to him. He's like, come here. And then the guy's like, okay, and he goes over there, right? With his little bandana and his little, yeah. And then my husband goes, what do you want, right? This is all going on in Bengali, by the way, so I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm just translating what I know. So he goes, what do you want? And the guy goes, I want money. And my husband says, I don't have a single paisa to give you. And then my husband grabs the machete. I'm telling you on the blade, he grabs the machete by the blade, okay? And he puts up this fight. And I'm standing there, my gum, I'm like, is this still like some weird Bengali joke that I don't understand? Like, I'm still trying to figure all this out. My husband grabs the thing by the blade. And my husband still has cuts um, 
very faint cuts on his hands and on his chest from where he was fighting with this man. And he was fighting in the living room, right? And then finally, my husband realizes like he can't grab the weapon out of the guy's hand, okay? So then my husband lets go of the machete. And he says, okay, okay, okay. I don't have any money, but I'll give you something. And the man goes, okay. My husband goes to the altar and he picks up this, we have, you know, we have three sets of deities. We have uh, Radha, Madan, Mohan, they're about, you know, this big, beautiful. You know, we have Gopal, Krishna, Kanhaya, Lal, and he's about this big. And then we have like the tiniest little horny tie, they're about this big. So my husband picks up Gopal, right? Scoops him up off the altar and he hands it to this man. He says, take this. And the man suddenly becomes religious, I swear. And he's like, no, 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 I don't want it, I don't want it. And my husband's there like, take it, take it, I don't want it. And he's like grabbing the man's hand, he's putting it in his hand. He's like, take the deity and just go, you know, because, and and and, and the man's like, no, 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 I don't want it, I don't want it. And then he goes, don't tell anybody I was, he offer, you know, he, he offers his obeisance, don't tell anybody I was here, this was a mistake. And he unlocks the door and he leaves. Now, what's interesting is he unlocked the door and leaves. Remember the beginning of the story, I told you the door was open, everything was open. This man had locked the door when he came inside so that he could murder us, right? Or so that we would have a, a small to none chance of escaping, okay? This guy was legit serious, like gonna do some, some straight up illegal felonious activity. So, and, and I'm gonna tell you right now, here in India, people are not like religious like that like especially if, if you're gonna like be a robber and a murderer like you're not gonna just suddenly turn religious you know they they they'd steal deities like the deities in mayapur the small chocha rata madhava like radharani's been stolen way back when people aren't religious like that where they're like i'll steal everything and murder everybody but you know Hare krishna you know that doesn't happen people will steal deities you know it's it, at the end of the day yes it's, it's metal and it has a, a cost it has a value so he could have just taken it and left and i don't know what happened he looked at this deity and i could see something happened with this deity and he was he was just like this isn't worth it this isn't worth it and he left and i watched the man leave you know he put the machete away put the fake gun away and uh he walked straight you know if, if you're a thief you're gonna be like checking out houses you're gonna you know looking around a little bit rattling some gates this this man walked straight you know, got in a rickshaw somewhere and left. So it was, it was such an interesting occurrence that happened because really in that moment, I could see that Krishna had empowered my husband, right, to suddenly become brave. And then when my husband realized that he could not defend himself anymore, I put on no makeup because I'm telling this story. I told you, I can't tell this story and put on makeup at the same time. So... My husband realized, you know, he surrendered. He just surrendered. And I, I realized also, there's a beautiful um, quotation from the Varaha Purana that I want to share with you. And I love it. And I'll even post it in the um, description box below. So if you want to like save it for yourself, for your heart, you can. Um, this is from the Varaha Purana. And it says, if my devotee is unable to remember me at the time of death, because of disturbances felt within the body at that time, then I shall remember my devotee and take him back to my supreme abode. So I thought this was very poignant because um, I didn't remember Krishna. I thought of many things. I thought of my family, my friends, the blood on the floor, the fact that nobody was gonna take me to the hospital, that I'll be dead and rotting in this room and you know nobody would care. I thought about many things, but I tell you, I didn't think of Krishna. I didn't think about Krishna one time. But how kind Krishna is that even though I didn't think of him, he thought of me. He remembered me. And in that moment, I stopped being uh, a spiritual atheist, you know, and I stopped blaming God for all my problems. As devotees, we have this tendency to blame God for all our problems. And I tell you, like, when you become a devotee at, at whatever extent or whatever degree you're a devotee at, like Krishna's got you, you know, like you can't, you can say it's your karma and you can say that it's the material nature trying to turn you against Krishna. Um, but honestly, in, since then, I've never, um, I've never blamed Krishna for anything. 
because that's when I realized in that moment, he actively, he himself actively came and saved me because that man could have killed me. He could have killed me and raped me and just left me here and not a soul would know. So also something interesting happened in that moment where I sort of started to reprioritize my life because I'd also realized like I didn't really like being a teacher and I didn't like many of the jobs that I've had in my life and I really wanted to start working more toward things that I like doing. Like I really like making these videos for you guys and I really wanna make more entertaining content for all of you. And, and that was kind of one of the pushes that Krishna made to make me do that. So it wasn't like I just popped up one day and was like, hey, I'm gonna just make videos. I'm, I'm, I'm just not built that way. So it kind of made me realize that I, ne I needed to reprioritize my life and start doing things that made me feel fulfilled. And somehow this, for some reason, this makes me feel fulfilled and happy. So that's my story about um, getting almost murdered in my house. And I still live here because ain't no thief gonna take me from my house. Um, <laughs> and that's about it. So um, I'm gonna finish getting dressed and you will see my final look, I guess. Give me just a moment. I'm back. So what I did here, if you can see it, it's like I did pink and then I faded it into blue. Um, I've also got a pink bindi on. I've got a pink, or sorry, a blue nose pin, pink earrings, a blue uh, Kanti mala. Um, always wearing my pearls. Uh, my hair is still kind of wet, so I've got like one of these, I don't know what these are called, so I'm gonna just put this in my hair. So that was my story. And some people are like, oh, if it was me, I would have like beat the guy up and I would have killed him and I would have done this and I would have done that. First of all, you have no idea what you would have done if you were in that situation. Um, secondly, I'm not a murderer, so I don't do stuff like that. I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover. I'm Prima, not killer. Oh, I also have like a, um, a ring with a blue stone in it. My husband gave this to me on our fifth wedding anniversary. So I like to match it sometimes. All right, so that's about it. So thank you very much, Malika, for your request. If you have any um, any questions, if you have any topics you want me to talk about, if you have a story that you want me to tell, uh, feel free to send me an email. Um, uh, my email address is below. You can add me on Instagram. You can add me on Dom Good Productions uh, on Facebook. Um, you can also subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below. Uh, tell me what you think about the story. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you are having a great day, or you had a great day, or you're going to have a great day. Thank you so much for your time. Bye, friends.